One of the uh, challenges I've always had um, is disengaging myself uh, from situations, from people, from different. Uh, so, and I guess the, um, the sort of the point of view that I've adopted is that I don't need to disengage myself from anything, whatever I'm involved in, I'm involved in basically just simply um, do the mantra in the context of that particular situation. It could be anything. And then sometimes I wonder, maybe I am kidding myself. Maybe I do need to actually disengage myself from a lot of different things. Um, maybe for the, uh, you know, for a better atmosphere, as Maharaj would say, uh, seeking a better atmosphere. Um, could you comment on that? Uh, you know, like to what degree does one actually disengage or does it happen by itself? Uh, in other words, there's a sl slow process as you do the mantra, the disengagement just sort of naturally unfolds. Or does yeah. one actually make a decision? I better get disengaged from this particular sort of thing or whatever. I, and I'm not talking about a situation that's uh, evil in any sense. I'm just saying that it could be maybe uh, just detrimental to one's spiritual uh, growth or, you know, like development maybe. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I would say if you're mantra, you know, number one, bhajans for my own self, <laughs> bhajans in the morning, bhajans in the morning, uh, you know, kakadarate, morning bhajans, afternoon bhajans, remain with your selfless self. All these things are occurring <laughs> and you remain with your selfless self. So it's not a matter of like detaching. Detachment is kind of automatic because you're remaining with your selfless self. And yet something comes, you do your job, you do your duties, speaking occurs in the moment, but you're not attached to it. So there's no need to like kind of like pull yourself out of the situation that the, the, the key is to remain with your selfless self, to not allow anything that pulls the attention or distracts you from remaining with your selfless self, even if you're in a conversation with other people, even if you're in a situation with other people, it's it, you're remaining with your selfless self. So then it doesn't become a matter of, I want to disengage. You're engaged with your selfless self, knowing that all of this is appearing on your spontaneous presence. So it, it requires attention to the amount that ne is needed in the moment, but you remain with your selfless self. We, we talked about before, and, and the seeing is like, all of this world is being projected from your spontaneous presence, but you're remaining inwardly. You're keeping with your own selfless self. You're totally just, okay, remain with my selfless self. And yet this world out here, you can see arising from your spontaneous presence. So although you're seeing a world out here, all the attention is inward. It's as if there's like a mirror in the back of your head and you're seeing inside and the reflection of what's going on out there is then seen as, oh yeah, that's arising on my spontaneous presence. But always inwardly, in with yourself. Somebody popped up again here, let's see. Uh, sometimes I get identified in a role and forget I'm not the role. It's like having one foot in one world and one in the other. Yeah, it's it's... Remain with yourself as self. That's the key. Because even when you say you want to disengage or you want to remain in the role, there's somebody, there's an I am somebody else that has to do something. But the key is mantra, remain with yourself as self. And then you don't need anything. You're remaining with yourself as self. When the attention is invited of the <coughs> listener, oh, so that I, and that's it. You remain with yourself as self. All of these things occurring on your spontaneous presence. It really is literally like inward seeing the outward situation. Well, I read. Go ahead. I read this week um, in Eknath Bhagavat. Um, Dattatreya was uh, giving some instruction to King Yadu, and he was saying that. Um, what he did was he saw everything, every distraction as his guru. In other words, um, everything was his, his, his guru, in other words. 
Um, and Eknath said the same thing. Everything for him became Janadana, his, his, his guru. Uh, every distraction, every situation, w regardless of what it was, good, bad, uh, all of nature, everything became that. And so it kind of like uh, diminished distraction. It kind of like uh, dissolved the, the whole, uh, I guess, when distraction is another way of saying separation or whatever. I'm not sure. Um, anyway. Yeah, I mean, the guru is your own self, the self. That's the, the guru. They could t talk about sad guru or whatever. That's your own selfless self. So by paying attention and being and remaining with your own selfless self, you are seeing, like we were saying, you're like looking and there's a reflection. And all of that is sad guru. Is, is the, that's it. It's all coming from sad guru. It's all. All the people you're seeing and to say that they're your, your teacher or whatever, your, your ideas and beliefs you're having about yourself are projecting your reality. The thought train that's running that you're identifying with as my thoughts and this, that's creating your reality. So the less of these concepts, ideas, and beliefs that you're holding, your projector won't have dust. The entire world would be seen without dust and you'll be just acting and doing your thing in the moment but you remain with your selfless self 